Whether our audit is going to have us just pulling samples or doing more exhaustive data analytics, we should confirm that our data is complete and accurate to the extent that we can. Column statistics will help us do this. So we recommend that when you receive a spreadsheet, first you make a copy of it, and then you pull just the columns that you need to perform your analysis. In this case, we're dealing with a payables file. In our first column, we have an invoice reference number, the amount, transaction date and type, the account code and account name, the due date, who it's posted by and approved by, the date approved, the date posted, the time posted, and then the PO number. So we'll go into column statistics. On the left hand side, we have our columns to analyze, and on the right hand side, we have the analysis to run. I'll leave everything checked and say OK. Column statistics returns a new worksheet, and across the top, we see each of our columns from our original spreadsheet. And then down the side, we see the analysis that was performed. In this row, we see the total cell count. So we can confirm that these are the number of records that we should have pulled from our initial data. And then you can see we do counts of numerics, dates, and texts. So for instance, we can see that our amount field is all numeric, as we would expect it to be. Our transaction dates are all dates, as we would expect them to be. The invoice reference number is a combination of numerics and text, and that's okay because these are invoices we receive from our suppliers, and some use numerics and some use an alphanumeric combination. Under the due date, we can see that we've got two records that are numeric and the rest are dates. So since this is a blue hyperlink, we can click on it and it'll return us those records that are in question. Now we can see that it, these came back as dates, sometimes in Excel, dates will appear as numeric and sometimes as dates. But we can go ahead and look in our original data for invoice reference numbers 83, 85, and 83, 86. So if we go back to our original spreadsheet, we can just use Excel's find and replace functionality to find those records. So we'll look for 83, 85. And we can see 8385 and 8386 are right next to each other. And both of these are showing up as numerics. We can easily change this in Teammate Analytics by highlighting those cells and clicking in Manipulate Fields, Format as Date. Going back to our statistics, we notice that we've got a row here that shows the total empty cells. So in our purchase order number column, we have about 630 that are blank, and we might want to compare that to our policies to make sure those records are OK to be blank. Next, we have some basic math functions that we perform. So for instance, we can see the total number of records with a positive amount and the total number of records with a negative amount. We can compare that to the data that we think we should be having to see if that's uh, appropriate and that we have all of the records that we think we should have. We can also do a sum of the total amount and here you can see we do maximums and minimums. So again, other ways that we can check our data. If we scroll over here to due date, we see we've got a date of 2107. Uh, that doesn't seem right. It's probably some kind of a typo. As well, we have date approved and date posted in 2019, which is a date in the future. So those are records we probably want to look into. We have some other advanced math functions that we perform. And then we get into some days of the week. So here we might want to look at our transactions. If we don't typically approve and post on the weekends. We might want to look at these transactions on Saturdays and Sundays. Next, we have our months. And so we can see our months of the year, and we can confirm that we've got our data uh, for the months that we anticipated having data for. We can also see by looking at this sometimes some trends. So for instance, we can see we do a lot more business at the end of the year. Next, we have our years. So here we see our 2016 and 2017 dates. And then we also have those dates that are in question, 2019, 2106, and 2107. So we can look at those records in more detail. Finally, column statistics finishes off by breaking up our data into the records with positive amounts and the records with negative amounts. So again, this is a way that we could check to see if we received all of the data we expected by comparing the sum of our positive cells or what was our total of our credits and debits, for example. We can also look at uh, the maximums and the minimums in this area. So pretty quickly, we can use column statistics to help us ensure that our data is complete and accurate.